Early in the morning, Jeroboam, Gideon, and all his men set up their camp at the spring of Herod. The Midianites were camped in a valley at the bottom of the hill called Morah, north of Gideon and his men. Then the Lord said to Gideon, I'm going to help your men defeat the Midianites, but you have too many men. I don't want the Israelites to forget me and brag that they saved themselves. So make an announcement to your men. Tell them, anyone who is afraid may leave Mount Gilead and go back home. At that time, 22,000 men left Gideon and went back home, but 10,000 still remained. Then the Lord said to Gideon, There are still too many men. Take the men down to the water, and I will test them for you there. If I say, This man will go with you, he will go. But if I say, That one will not go with you, then he will not go. So Gideon led the men down to the water. There the Lord said to him, Separate the men like this. Those who drink the water by using their tongue to lap it up like a dog will be in one group, and those who bend down to drink will be in the other group. There were 300 men who used their hands to bring water to their mouth and lapped it like a dog does. All the other people bent down and drank the water. The Lord said to Gideon, I will use the 300 men who lap the water like a dog. I will use them to save you and I will allow you to defeat the Midianites. Let the other men go home. So Gideon sent the other men of Israel home. He kept the 300 men with him. Those 300 men kept the supplies and the trumpets of the other men who went home. The Midianites were camped in the valley below Gideon's camp. During the night, the Lord spoke to Gideon and said, Get up, I will let you defeat the Midianite army. Go down to their camp. If you are afraid to go alone, take your servant Pura with you. Go into the camp of the Midianites. Listen to what they are saying. After that, you will not be afraid to attack them. So Gideon and his servant Pura went down to the edge of the enemy camp. The Midianites, the Amalekites, and all the other people from the east were camped in that valley. There were so many people that they seemed like a swarm of locusts. It seemed like they had as many camels as there are grains of sand on the seashore. Gideon came to the enemy camp and he heard a man talking. That man was telling his friend about a dream that he had. He was saying, I dreamed that a round loaf of bread came rolling into the camp of the Midianites. That loaf of bread hit the tent so hard that the tent turned over and fell flat. The man's friend knew the meaning of the dream. He said, Your dream can only have one meaning. Your dream is about that man from Israel. It is about Gideon, son of Joash. It means that God will let Gideon defeat the whole army of Midian. After he heard the man talking about the dream and what it meant, Gideon bowed down to God. Then Gideon went back to the camp of the Israelites and called out to the people, Get up! The Lord will help us defeat the Midianites! Then Gideon divided the 300 men into three groups. He gave each man a trumpet and an empty jar with a burning torch inside. Then Gideon told the men, Watch for me and do what I do. Follow me to the edge of the enemy camp. When I get to the edge of the camp, do exactly what I do. You men surround the enemy camp. I and all the men with me will blow our trumpets. When we blow our trumpets, you blow your trumpets too. Then shout these words, for the Lord and for Gideon. So Gideon and the 100 men with him went to the edge of the enemy camp. They came there just after the enemy changed guards. It was during the middle watch of the night. Gideon and his men blew their trumpets and smashed their jars. Then all three groups of Gideon's men blew their trumpets and smashed their jars. The men held the torches in their left hands and the trumpets in their right hands. As they blew their trumpets, they shouted, A sword for the Lord and a sword for Gideon! Gideon's men stayed where they were, but inside the camp, the men of Midian began shouting and running away. When Gideon's 300 men blew their trumpets, 
the Lord caused the men of Midian to kill each other with their swords. The enemy army ran away to the city of Bethsaida, which is toward the city of Zerera. They ran as far as the border of the city of Abel Mehola, which is near the city of Tabith. Then soldiers from the tribes of Naphtali, Asher, and all of Manasseh were told to chase the Midianites. Gideon sent messengers through all the hill country of Ephraim. The messengers said, Come down and attack the Midianites! Take control of the river as far as Beth Bara and the Jordan River. Do this before the Midianites get there. So they called all the men from the tribe of Ephraim. They took control of the river as far as Beth Bara. The men of Ephraim caught two of the Midianite leaders named Oreb and Zeb. They killed Oreb at a place named the Rock of Oreb and Zeb at a place named the Winepress of Zeb. They continued chasing the Midianites. But first they cut off the heads of Oreb and Zeb and took the heads to Gideon. Gideon was at the place where people crossed the Jordan River. The men of Ephraim were angry with Gideon. When they found him, they asked, Why did you treat us this way? Why didn't you call us when you went to fight against the Midianites? But Gideon answered the men of Ephraim, I have not done as well as you. You people of Ephraim have a much better harvest than my family, the Abiezers. At harvest time, you leave more grapes in the vineyard than my family gathers. Isn't that true? In the same way, you have a better harvest now. God allowed you to capture Oreb and Zeb, the leaders of Midian. How can I compare my success with what you did? When the men of Ephraim heard Gideon's answer, they were not as angry as they had been. Then Gideon and his three hundred men came to the Jordan River and went across to the other side. But they were tired and hungry. Gideon said to the men of the city of Succoth, Give my soldiers something to eat. They are very tired. We are still chasing Zeba and Zalmunna, kings of Midian. But the leaders of the city of Succoth said to Gideon, why should we give your soldiers something to eat? You haven't caught Zeba and Zamuna yet. Then Gideon said, The Lord will help me capture Zeba and Zamuna. And since you would not give us any food, I will come back and beat you with thorns and briars from the desert. Gideon left the city of Succoth and went to the city of Penuel. He asked the men of Penuel for food, just as he asked the men of Succoth. But the men of Penuel gave Gideon the same answer that the men of Succoth had given. So Gideon said to the men of Penuel, After I win the victory, I will come back here and pull this tower down. Zeba and Zamuna and their army were in the city of Karkor. Their army had 15,000 soldiers in it. These soldiers were all who were left of the army of the people of the east. 120,000 strong soldiers of that army had already been killed. Gideon and his men used Tent Dwellers Road, which is east of the cities of Noba and Jogbaha, and attacked the enemy at Karkor. The enemy army did not expect the attack. Zeba and Zamuna, kings of the Midianites, ran away, but Gideon chased and caught them. Gideon and his men defeated the enemy army. Then Gideon, son of Joash, returned from the battle. He and his men returned by going through a mountain pass called the Pass of Heres. Gideon captured a young man from the city of Succoth. He asked the young man some questions. The young man wrote down some names for Gideon. The young man wrote down the names of the leaders and elders of the city of Succoth. He gave Gideon the names of seventy-seven men. When Gideon came to the city of Succoth, he said to the men of that city, here are Zeba and Zamuna. You made fun of me by saying, Why should we give food to your tired soldiers? You have not caught Zeba and Zamuna yet. Gideon took the elders of the city of Succoth and beat them with thorns and briars from the desert. Gideon also pulled down the tower in the city of Penuel and killed the men living in that city. Then Gideon said to Zeba and Zamuna, you killed some men on Mount Tabor. What were the men like? 
Zeba and Zamuna answered. They were like you. Each one of them seemed like a prince. Gideon said, Those men were my brothers, my mother's sons. As the Lord lives, if you had not killed them, I would not kill you now. Then Gideon turned to Jether, his oldest son, and said, Kill these kings! But Jether was only a boy and was afraid, so he would not take out his sword. Then Zeba and Zamuna said to Gideon, Come on, kill us yourself. You are a man and strong enough to do the job. So Gideon got up and killed Zeba and Zamuna. Then Gideon took the decorations, shaped like the moon, off their camels' necks. The Israelites said to Gideon, You saved us from the Midianites, so now rule over us. We want you, your son, and your grandson to rule over us. But Gideon told the Israelites, The Lord will be your ruler. I will not rule over you, and my son will not rule over you. Some of the people who the men of Israel defeated were Ishmaelites. And the Ishmaelite men wore gold earrings. So Gideon said to the Israelites, I want you to do this one thing for me. I want each of you to give me a gold earring from the things you took in the battle. The Israelites said to Gideon, We will gladly give you what you want. So they put a coat down on the ground, and each man threw an earring onto the coat. When the earrings were gathered up, they weighed about 43 pounds. This did not include the other gifts the Israelites gave to Gideon. They also gave him jewelry shaped like the moon and jewelry shaped like teardrops. And they gave him purple robes. The kings of the Midianites had worn these things. They also gave him the chains from the camels of the Midianite kings. Gideon used the gold to make an ephod, which he put in his hometown, the town called Ophrah. All the Israelites worshipped the ephod. In this way, the Israelites were not faithful to God. They worshipped the ephod. The ephod became a trap that caused Gideon and his family to sin. The Midianites were forced to be under the rule of the Israelites. The Midianites did not cause trouble anymore, and the land was at peace for 40 years as long as Gideon was alive. Jeroboam, Gideon, son of Joash, went home. Gideon had 70 sons of his own. He had so many sons because he had many wives. He had a slave woman who lived in the city of Shechem. He had a son by her. He named that son Abimelech. So Gideon, son of Joash, died at a good old age. He was buried in the tomb that Joash, his father, owned. That tomb is in the city of Ophrah, where the family of Abiezer lives. As soon as Gideon died, the Israelites again were not faithful to God. They followed Baal. They made Baal Beareth their God. The Israelites did not remember the Lord their God, who had saved them from all their enemies living around them. The Israelites were not loyal to the family of Jeroboam, even though he had done many good things for them. Abimelech was the son of Jeroboam, Gideon. Abimelech went to his uncles who lived in the city of Shechem. He said to his uncles and all his mother's family, Ask the leaders of the city of Shechem this question. Is it better for you to be ruled by the seventy sons of Jeroboam or to be ruled by only one man? Remember, I am your relative. Abimelech's uncles spoke to the leaders of Shechem and asked them that question. The leaders of Shechem decided to follow Abimelech. They said, After all, he is our brother. So the leaders of Shechem gave Abimelech seventy pieces of silver. That silver was from the temple of the god Baal Bareth. Abimelech used the silver to hire some men. These men were worthless, reckless men. They followed Abimelech wherever he went. Abimelech went to his father's house at Ophrah and murdered his brothers. He killed the seventy sons of his father, Jeroboam. He killed them all at the same time. But Jeroboam's youngest son hid from Abimelech and escaped. The youngest son's name was Jothan. Then all the leaders in Shechem and the house of Milo came together. Everyone gathered beside the big tree of the pillar in Shechem and made Abimelech their king. 
Jotham heard that the leaders of the city of Shechem had made Abimelech king. When he heard this, he went and stood on the top of Mount Gerizim and shouted out this story to the people. Listen to me, you leaders of the city of Shechem. Then let God listen to you. One day, the trees decided to choose a king to rule over them. The trees said to the olive tree, You be king over us. But the olive tree said, My oil is used to honor gods and humans. Shall I stop making oil just to go and sway over the other trees? Then the trees said to the fig tree, Come and be our king. But the fig tree answered, Shall I stop making my good, sweet fruit just to go and sway over the other trees? Then the trees said to the vine, Come and be our king. But the vine answered, My wine makes men and kings happy. Should I stop making my wine just to go and sway over the trees? Finally, all the trees said to the thorn bush, Come and be our king. But the thorn bush said to the trees, If you really want to make me king over you, come and find shelter in my shade. But if you don't want to do this, let fire come out of the thorn bush. Let the fire burn even the cedar trees of Lebanon. Now, if you were completely honest when you made Abimelech king, may you be happy with him. And if you have been fair to Jeroboam, Gideon, and his family, and if you have treated him as you should, this is also good. But remember what my father did for you. He fought for you and risked his life when he saved you from the Midianites. But now you have turned against my father's family. You have killed 70 of his sons all at the same time. You made Abimelech the new king over the city of Shechem. He is only the son of my father's slave girl. But you made him king because he is your relative. So if you have been completely honest to Jeroboam and his family today, then may you be happy with Abimelech as your king. And may he be happy with you. But leaders of Shechem and the house of Milo, if you have not acted right, may Abimelech destroy you. And may Abimelech be destroyed too. After Jotham had said this, he ran away and escaped to the city named Beer. He stayed there because he was afraid of his brother Abimelech. <laughs>